How about now? There we go. Good afternoon. I'm Bob Snyder, uh, Vice President and Kansas City Branch Manager for Emory Sapp & Sons. I'm also the President of the Kansas City Chapter of the National Utility Contractors Association, NUCA. I'm uh, really pleased to be able to uh, welcome you to our 2023, fiscal year 2023, um, capital improvement projects rollout presentation. It's great to actually be here in person, and we've got some people also watching virtually, but really nice to have an audience with us today. So first of all, I'd like to share with you uh, a little bit about NUCA. NUCA's core purpose is to improve the operational proficiency and financial performance of its member companies by providing services that focus on shared industry issues. NUCA also works to secure more funding for America's aging and underground infrastructure. Founded in 1964, NUCA is the driving force for improving conditions in the utility construction and excavating industry for both open cut and trenchless contractors. Through its 35 chapters covering 22 states, NUCA is the largest underground utility industry trade association in the country, representing contractors, subcontractors, specialty contractors, engineers, suppliers, and manufacturers involved in water, sewer, gas, electric, telecommunications, construction site development, and excavation sectors of the industry. At, some of the, at the local level, our mission is to advance the utility construction and excavation industry of the Kansas City metropolitan area through a unified voice, municipal government advocacy, and community involvement. NUCA of Greater Kansas City is also very excited to be celebrating our fifth anniversary this year. For anyone interested in becoming a member of NUCA Kansas City, we have a table set up in back. We have some folks that would be happy to answer any of your questions and can help you. Speaking of those folks, Mary Odom, our new executive director, and Mac Andrew, who is now our government liaison, are worth mentioning, and we appreciate their involvement and their service to our association. Please stop by and say hi to Mac and Mary when you get a chance. NUCA played a key role in helping get the Infrastructure Investment and Jobs Act, a $1.2 trillion piece of legislation passed through Congress last fall. This represents an increase in spending of $550 billion in infrastructure investments. This funding is long overdue and vital to rebuilding our key critical infrastructure that we have become so dependent on here in the U.S. This huge investment is intended to be spent within the next five years, so it's a very exciting time to be not only in the industry, but also to be a benefactor of this historic infrastructure investment. This infusion of funding should be for a significant number of projects available the next five years and provide a lot of work for the industry. But don't worry, our new members are up for this challenge. Bring it on, this isn't our first radio. <laughs> <laughs> so finally, uh, I'd also like to share with you that uh, NUCA KC plans to host another Dozer Day event in October. For those of you who may have remembered, we held this event back in October of 2019 uh, out at the Kansas Speedway. It was a great event to help share our industry with young children, to get an early start with workforce development, and to raise money for local charities. Due to COVID, we weren't able to have the event in 2020 and 2021, but we're ready to have another one. So at this time, we're going to have it hopefully out at Arrowhead Stadium's parking lot. And uh, just stay tuned for some more details over the next few months. So to that end, we would like to, uh, we're pleased again and honored to host this fiscal year 2023 capital improvement project rollout presentation. We're delighted to have our several metro-wide municipal partners participate in today's event, and we look forward to having more in the future. We are also very pleased to support the Mid-America Assistance Coalition, an organization advocating on behalf of low-income utility customers and their project warmth. Any funds that are raised today above and beyond our expenses for the event will be donated to them. Uh, 
Yeah, absolutely. So I'd like to thank our sponsors. Without their support, uh, this event would not be possible. Thank you also in advance to everyone who is here also in person and also uh, virtually um, for your interest in this program. So with that, it is my pleasure to welcome Nicholas Bassanetto, City Engineer in Kansas City, Missouri, of Kansas City, Missouri Public Works. All right, how's everybody doing tonight? Good. Well, first of all, we want to thank NUCA for inviting us. Uh, this is a great event and all the advocacy work uh, that they do for us. Um, so my name is Nicholas Bossonetto. I'm the city engineer for Kansas City, Missouri. I just got here about three, four months ago, so I'm still trying to learn the street names and all that kind of thing. But uh, let's see here. So Missouri Public Works, uh, we, we have a little bit of reorganization going on lately. Uh, Michael Shaw is our director right now. Uh, if you don't know him, he's a great, great guy to work for. Uh, under him is uh, Jason Waldron, who's in the attendance today. Uh, Jason Waldron is in charge of, of three of the five divisions in, in Public Works. Uh, and he's also uh, very busy right now with the street extension, uh, streetcar extension project, which I'm sure you're all very familiar with. Um, the first uh, sort of division under Public Works is the Multimodal Division, and that's led by Angie Laurie. That division handles all the bike lanes development, the streetcar extension, parking, and traffic engineering groups. Uh, the second division, which I'm sure you guys are very familiar with, is the Construction Division, headed by Mark Montgomery. And, of course, he's in charge of all the street resurfacing, sidewalk uh, reconstruction, the permitting, and construction inspection projects. Finally, the, I'm in charge of the Capital Projects Division, which, uh, which has the Lighting Group, the Right-of-Way Group, the IT and Engineering Group. Uh, we've reorganized uh, our division because we have right now four project managers, so we've reorganized based on council districts. Patty Hildebrand, which I'm sure some of you know, is in charge of Districts 1 and 2 on the Northland. Uh, Stacy Lowe is in charge of Districts 3 and 5, and Randy Elwine is in charge of Districts 4 and 6. And Chad Thompson's doing capital projects uh, like the big jail, the new jail project that's going to be coming out. Uh, you know, feel free to reach out to our project managers. They know more about our projects than, than I do, for sure. So, uh, and, and, of course, Mario Vasquez used to be one of our project managers. He's been uh, promoted to assistant city manager, which is a great promotion for him. If you know him, please reach out and congratulate him. Um, so the goal of our capital projects division is to deliver more projects. Mm -hmm. Uh, we have a lot of projects right now, and, and like Nuke has just said, there's a lot of money coming our way, so we got to get better at delivering projects, getting them out to bid. Right now, we have about 100 active projects that we're working on. Um, so with that said, let's start with some of the projects. Now, remember, our projects change all the time. So, you know, this is, a, this is sort of a highlight, but we have a lot of projects being advertised. You know, please check on, on, our, on our projects. Uh, the first project is Benton Avenue. Boulevard Bridge over Brush Creek. Uh, that's a $5 million project, which will be going out to bid in about 2023. Uh, it's a bridge uh, deck replacement project. Uh, the next project is the Grand Boulevard Pike Bike Ped Pedestrian Bridge. That's going to be a brand new bridge carrying bike and pedestrians, and it's going to be built parallel to the existing Grand Avenue Bridge. Uh, the plan is to put the uh, north extension of the streetcar on the existing bridge. And that's going to be about $6 million probably later this fall. Uh, next project is the Gregory Boulevard Bridge over the Big Blue River. Uh, that's a bridge that was originally built in around 1917 or so. And that's going to be a full, full replacement, tear down and rebuild. Uh, we're looking for funding for that project uh, probably around 2023. Uh, next project is the front street improvements from Chateau Trafficway to Universal Avenue. That's going to be a full depth reconstruction, adding sidewalks, stormwater, um, you know, medians, uh, street lighting, uh, and there's also going to be a water line uh, replacement project as part of that. The next project is, uh, and that's going to be maybe $12 million, and probably this summer it's going out, uh, advertising out to bid. Uh, next project is Lee Summit Road from Anderson Drive to Lake, Lake, Lakewood Boulevard, and that's to improve the geo, geometrics of the road to remove some of the dangerous horizontal and vertical curves. Uh, it will improve the existing corridor to match the road sections from our other projects. 
and you know, $5.7 million probably later this year. Um, next project is North Fremont Avenue reconstruction project from Northeast 50th Street to Northeast 57, 51st Street. And that's to build sidewalks uh, to connect to the Maplewood Elementary School. I think that project's out to bid right now. Uh, next project we have coming out is North Green Hills Reconstruction Project, and that's a road widening. Uh, we're going to adjust the profile to take out some of those vertical curves, new pavement, curb and gutters, sidewalk and trail, enclosed stormwater sewer system, uh, and new street lighting. Uh, that project's currently in uh, right away condemnation, so we should be bidding that project out in June 2022, and that's going to be about $11.5 million. Uh, next project is North, Northwest Wacomus project, uh, and that's doing uh, from Englewood to 62nd, and that's to provide sidewalks, rebuild, the, do some traffic calming, and it's going to connect the Clayton Meadows to Oakwood Forest neighborhoods. Uh, we're currently waiting on MoDOT to review our right-of-way process, so it should be out to bid shortly, hopefully. Uh, the other project is Swope Park Industrial Flyover. That's actually a water that's being funded through uh, question two of our geobond project. It's a, it's, it, it goes over uh, the, the flood levee. So it's actually a, a water project, but we're doing this, it's, you know, we're good at do building bridges. Uh, next project is Route 152 trail segment uh, from North Oak to Maple Woods, and then another segment from Lion Creek Parkway to the Green Hills, Green Hills Road. And those are trail projects, building 10 foot wide uh, trails. A uh, project that's going out to bid uh, is uh, soon is the Warren All project. Uh, that's going to be a, a road dive from 75th Street, uh, extension of the trolley track trail from 74th to 75th Street, and reconstruction of Warren All Road from 74th to 79th Street. Uh, the project will be expanded to include construction of a sidewalk from Warren All to Washington. And that's going out to bid soon. That should be about $9 million. Uh, finally, North Oak Trafficway Reconstruction uh, from 42nd Street to Vivian Road. Uh, that's to remove and reconstruct the existing section of roadway with an enhanced cross section that will include amenities to the areas like incorporating uh, from the streets, it's streetscape master plan. Um, so. That's all my projects that I have for you now. Like I said, we're always, uh, you know, working on new projects, and as funding becomes available, perhaps we'll bid more. Uh, but that's our, all my all my projects. I think uh, Matt Bonds next with water. Please welcome Jeff Martin, Chief Engineering Officer, and Matt Bond, Deputy Director, KC Water. Okay, we'll see if this works. Hello, everybody. Great to see you. Uh, nice to be in person. So uh, the last couple of times on uh, video have been a little bit dry. So um, thanks to Nuka for organizing this. And thanks to Nuka and all of you for the support that we had on April 5th with our wastewater bond election, uh, three quarters of a billion dollars. It's going to be funding a lot of these projects that are coming up. So thank you all. Thank you all uh, so very, very much. That uh, three quarters of a billion dollars is gonna last us six or seven years. So we'll be going out and we'll be needing your help soon, uh, fairly soon. So I wanted to talk just a little bit about the people that manage the projects. So uh, basically you'll be hearing from uh, Jeff Martin, our chief engineering officer on the left. Uh, if you're Casey, uh, Casey Water uh, staff, if you could uh, stand up and then you guys can harass them a little bit during the, uh, during the social time. So go ahead and stand up Casey Water and I'll I'll point out how I can. Blake Blake Anderson's our facilities. Stay up, Blake. Stay up. Is our facilities <laughs> facilities division head? Uh, I don't think Matt Thomas is here. Uh, Melanie Jolette is our water distribution section head. Dan Out is our uh, is our project management office lead, and then he also chairs our design professional quarterly meetings where we talk about all the projects that are coming up. So, uh, if you're not on that mailing list, we'll have contact information at the end, and you can get added to that. I think Karina's here, Karina Papakan, our collection system section head. There's Karina. Tom Kimes, stormwater division head. And uh, Brian Hess, uh, we were just over in Jeff City, is our smart sewer division head. So, And then uh, Srini Vallabhanini is on his way back from India for, uh, from about three weeks of leave. So we're very, uh, we wish he was here tonight and, and uh, really want to get him back here because we missed him over three weeks. So thanks, everybody. 
I'm going to talk about some of the smart sewer projects, and uh, we've got several of them. Uh, we did have a major uh, win in the renegoti renegotiation of our consent decree uh, last year, and we right-sized the program due to affordability. I know it probably modified some of your business plans uh, going forward, but uh, it really is a lot more affordable program for the for the uh, wastewater rate paying customers for Kansas City. First two projects are uh, our consent decree projects. You'll see a lot of green infrastructure coming forward. That's a big part of our consent decree is to build 640 acres, uh, greened acres of, of uh, green infrastructure in three tranches uh, by 2035. Uh, this one at Mill Creek Park is a, is a, is a great project. Uh, we've uh, we're, uh, just completed the preliminary design. We're going through detailed design and we will bid this late this year. It's in the northern part of Mill Creek Park. And you can see we're gonna have, uh, it's a tall grass prairie concept. And then uh, obviously holds a lot of water through the, uh, through the earthwork and retaining walls and uh, helps to treat the, you know, retain, hold back some of the combined sewer uh, flows, but uh, also treats, the, treats it. But then we also have uh, great community amenities in, in the project. And we had really good uh, interface with the Mill Creek Park uh, Association as we were getting this together. And I think it's gonna be a great project. And we have a sewer separation separating the stormwater uh, so that it doesn't get into the, uh, into the combined sewer. And a big part of that uh, is uh, some green infrastructure on this project is all, as well. So uh, this is a project that we'll also uh, advertise and bid this year. And then the last project I'm going to talk about is a major sewer rehabilitation. For those of you that may have had to deal with Woods Weather Road closures at Santa Fe uh, for uh, an emergency uh, sewer, <laughs> sewer rehabilitation that we worked on, this is the segment that is just south of that. So it's a 120 inch uh, non-reinforced concrete. Uh, it's partially reinforced concrete pipe constructed early in the uh, early in the 19 in the uh, 1900s and uh, the uh, as part of our uh, annual sewer rehabilitation program we're now uh, TVing and analyzing what this is so we can develop the bridging documents and this will be a design build project so great project coming up so now I'd like to have uh, Jeff Martin come up and talk about the rest of our highlighted projects Thanks, Matt, and thanks for uh, having us here today to talk. So appreciate it. So just going to highlight a few uh, projects that we have uh, coming up this year. I won't go with everything on the list, but just kind of some of the key ones. So we do continue to uh, plan to continue on with our uh, very successful water main replacement program that we've had uh, moving into our 11th year now. So big thanks to everyone here who's helped with that program over the years and those who came before me to keep it going. So a lot of uh, design assistance, construction activities going on uh, with this. So uh, we do plan on uh, putting out just a little over $28 million with the water main replacement projects throughout the city. Uh, we will have uh, four additional uh, transmission main uh, projects as well as a uh, distribution design build as well with that. So, And then uh, we do have uh, one of our large uh, transmission main design projects going out along uh, Wacomas, North Wacomas. So, this is uh, in conjunction, this will take off from where uh, the Public Works project that Nick mentioned a little bit ago, uh, and we'll continue north from there in a section that we replaced uh, a couple years ago now. So, continue on with the clean water side, we do have a uh, elevated storage tank uh, project that we plan to put out to uh, construction and uh, early this year. This will be out at our Blue Ridge pump station. This will be a composite uh, elevated storage tank, 3 million gallons, uh, which is near 131st in uh, Prospect. And then as a separate project, we'll also have uh, construction of a water transmission main that will feed this tank as well. So that's, uh, we're finishing up design. So moving over to the design side with the, uh, same with the clean water stuff. So we will have a design uh, project coming out uh, for improvements uh, and, uh, uh, switching of our North Auxiliary pump station. This is at our water treatment plant. So this is really to, uh, to look at the pumps we have in place now that currently serve uh, south of the river, but to uh, reconfigure, uh, utilize some of those underutilized pumps to uh, meet the demands we have north of the river. So we're doing some evaluation of our demands, uh, looking at the best place to uh, locate this particular uh, pump station within the, uh, the water treatment plant. So be looking for that as a design coming out, so. 
and then uh, kind of rolling rounding out with our clean water side so we have a lab remodel uh, project that we'll be putting out here in the uh, the next uh, next few weeks so this uh, this is our uh, laboratory that serves not only our, our clean water but our wastewater functions as well it's located at our uh, water treatment plant uh, there just uh, north of North Kansas City so this is uh, will be bid as a construction manager at risk project we currently have a design underway at it. We're moving, uh, just got done with schematic design and moving on into uh, design development. So this will be an expansion of the existing building that was per, uh, originally built in the early 90s and then a remodel of the uh, remainder of the building that is to, to stay in place. So all while uh, we, we keep, uh, keep all our lab functions underway at that location. So it should be a challenging project, but a pretty, pretty exciting project as well. So. Moving over to the uh, moving over to the wastewater side, a uh, project that's near and dear to Blake Anderson's and Brent Herring's heart. I know is uh, we're we're going to do a, a facility plan for our Blue River wastewater treatment plant. So we'll really be looking at uh, the uh, the preliminary treatment upgrades for our our main plant there that we have our THP project underway right now. Um, we'll also be looking at uh, wet weather upgrades, what we need uh, to do long term for that plant to handle the wet weather flows that come to it. And then we'll also be looking at uh, what is needed uh, for system asset and, uh, and uh, improved reliability at the uh, secondary treatment plant, which is just on the north side of Front Street, about a mile up the road from, uh, from Blue River, all part of that uh, one plant facility. Uh, staying with the, uh, the dirty water side, we'll also be looking at some... Uh, some screen replacements there at the Blue River Wastewater Treatment Plant. This will be a design build project, replacing the mechanical screens that we have at that, uh, that particular uh, location, um, modifying some of the inlet structures, uh, getting the grit screenings within there and the distribution of the flows within, the, uh, within those splitter chambers. So, And then uh, also uh, to really help serve our, uh, our THP upgrades we have going right now at Blue River will be doing some sludge screen uh, improvements or additions actually at our west side treatment plant. So we're, we're wrapping up that major plant improvement we have underway right now there, but we'll need to be uh, putting uh, sludge screening in to, uh, to make sure we have, uh, have all the debris, as much of the large debris as we can out of that before it gets pumped over to a blue river plant to, uh, to process through the, uh, through the THP process. So um, we'll also include some motor control and obviously a building to, uh, to house all this in. That really highlights just some of the key projects we have coming up. So uh, as Matt mentioned earlier, so we do continue to have quarterly design professional update meetings. Uh, we have been doing those virtually via Teams. If anyone is not already on that invite list, please uh, send an email to one of us at the uh, the contact here, and we'll uh, get that info to Dan so we can add everybody to the list. So, so that is all for us at KC Water. Thanks, everyone, for the support. I appreciate everyone coming out tonight. So. Please welcome Doug Wesselschmidt, Public Works Director for the City of Grandview, Missouri. As the other speakers have indicated, it's good to see everybody here tonight. Appreciate everybody's time and your interest in, in our city's projects. Uh, there's a number of projects that are in your book. I'm just going to highlight a few of them uh, that would be of most interest to this group here. Um, start off with um, the Blue Ridge Boulevard resurfacing. That's going to be from uh, 3rd Street, Cartwright to the west. That's part of that. Um, I've been hearing about it is that there's some COVID money that's uh, uh, through the Federal Highway Department that's um, been given to uh, Mid America Regional Council to to divvy up. So um, half of that's going to the Kansas side, the other half is going to the Missouri side. But what their plan is is uh, have a mark let contract uh, for a big resurfacing um, contract that would be be then divvied up between all the different cities. But it would be uh, one large contract. So if you're in the uh, paving industry, that'll be a, a one to keep an eye out. Uh, they're looking at the uh, paving, uh, the, the construction taking place uh, uh, in 2023. My picture was larger on that, so. Um, uh, the next one we have is the um, 
Kansas City Southern Railroad Bridge over Blue Ridge Boulevard. Um, Grand Systems is our designer on that. We're uh, approaching the uh, completion of the plans. Uh, we have funding from the Federal uh, Railroad Administration, Kansas City Southern Railroad, as, uh, as well as the city. All of our funding is in place. Uh, the last of the funding was the city portion of that. Last week, we had a $21 million bond issue uh, that was approved by voters. That all, there was three questions. All of them were approved 80% or above. So. Uh, uh, we feel that the, the citizens have confidence in, in what the, uh, the city is doing, um, not only police, fire, but uh, public works and parks. So um, the uh, last funding uh, detail was uh, the city chair of this, and again, that was approved by our voters to do that project. Uh, again, the, the picture didn't come out, but it's a real good-looking rendering, so hopefully uh, hopefully the uh, the funding is... is uh, um, um, available to uh, to do everything that's shown in the picture. So um, we're estimating that that uh, construction contract would be about $7 million. Um, I understand construction costs are going down. So uh, hopefully that $7 million is good. So I, I, I know all my consulting engineer says their, their costs are going down. So uh, hopefully the construction following up the same way. Um, uh, and then once we get that bridge done, then um, we need to start looking at the, the next bridge. This is Kansas City Southern. Um, I'm going to call it uh, on the railroad side, just downstream, uh, closer to the city as it goes over Grandview uh, Road. So um, again, looking for funding for this one. So on this one, uh, we do not have a, a designer or, of course, a construction contractor on that. but. Uh, Again, looking at uh, probably about a half a million dollar design and a, about a $7 million construction on that project that uh, um, once we get the Blue Ridge Boulevard crossing out of the way, then we can start concentrating on this one. Uh, part of our bond package that was approved was to do one more section of Main Street uh, over the past, um, I'll say 10 years, before I was there, uh, they were doing uh, sections of Main Street from I-49 west and and so uh one more section that they would have liked to have done a few years back is is this section uh from 7th street west to the um there's, it'll cross a railroad spur for kansas city southern and then across the kansas city southern main line um i'd like to t take a look at doing some uh, quiet zones there so um it would be designing and construction the 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 street lighting, the planters, the the sidewalks, the the paver bricks, all of that. Um, so again, I'll be looking for a uh, engineer to do um, that design so we can get it into construction uh, within the next year or two. Um, I'm showing about a one million dollar total project cost for that project. One of them that we currently have under design, Garver is our designer on this project, is uh, in cooperation with. Uh, MoDOT is uh, doing some improvements to 150 Highway. There's been a uh, proposed uh, uh, soccer, retail, residential complex there. It's been playing for a number of years. It's uh, evolving over time, uh, but we're getting some, um, some positive indication that the, the developers want to proceed with that project. So what this project, what our project involves is uh, adding uh, westbound right turn lanes um, at Kelly, uh, Park Hills, which is in the middle, and then Byers. And then uh, Kelly and Byers already have signals. Again, we're adding right turn lanes there. But then this would add a, a, a traffic signal at the Byers, which will be the main entrance to the soccer retail complex. Um, construction's estimated about $1.8 million. And, um, at MoDOT cost share on half of it and the city funds on half of that. And Garber's just um, just beginning the design, so we're probably looking at 2023, 20, 24 on that as far as the need for uh, contractors. Uh, this project is a project that we have um, federal STP funds for. This is our 2023 project. Um, right now, there's uh, two large 
corrugated metal pipes that go under uh, Raytown Road. Basically, they were put in when the when the whole lake was put in, and in the park system, and the, the roads around that. So um, those things are rusted out. We're getting some settlement of the road, so um, that's been happening for some time. So we've got in line for some uh, federal funding to replace those culverts with uh, basically a bridge structure as opposed to uh, two large pipes. Uh, Benish has been our designer on that. Uh, essentially, the plans are about at 80%. It'll involve a um, county park trail bridge next to it. So they're they're starting to work on that. So this will involve um, involvement with uh, the feds, city, county, and the Corps of Engineers. Um, quickly moving on, uh, next project is I think a very interesting project. It's a, a Bailey Bridge that has been relocated uh, two or three times. Uh, the last came from Kenneth Road off of State Line. Um, so we're looking at reassembling this Bailey Bridge that's in our uh, public works yard. And uh, Mac Andrews been involved with uh, that project in the past when it's been in another location. So we're calling it our Mac Andrew Memorial Bridge Project. So. <laughs> And then um, in, uh, on that one, or um, be putting that out, possibly looking at a design build um, for that project. And then uh, what I have in front of us is uh, a sanitary sewer project that Trek is designing for us. Plans are probably about 75%. So we'll want to get that one out, uh, hopefully later on this year, looking at about a $700,000 construction cost on it. And one more uh, a project that Talifair on Brown has been working on, and it's uh, to do some storm um, water relief in this uh, area off of uh, 140th Street, east of I-49. Um, Talifair on Brown, probably about 50% done with the plans. So looking to finish that up and get that out to bid uh, yet this year and looking at about a half a million dollar construction cost on that. So. Thank you very much. Please welcome Nate Baldwin, city engineer with the city of Olathe, Kansas. Honestly, I did not have too much to drink tonight, so <laughs> just a little trip. So again, I'm Nate Baldwin, city engineer uh, with Olathe. And uh, unlike some of our uh, neighboring cities in Johnson County, Olathe actually has our own water and sewer utilities. Uh, so I get to highlight uh, projects from uh, all sorts of disciplines. So um, first one I'm going to talk about tonight is uh, the largest project we have on the books right now. Uh, this is 119th Street from Woodland to Northgate. Uh, project limits on this spans uh, over a mile and a half long on 119th Street and includes improvements to six different intersections. Uh, it will extend 119th Street from Northgate to Woodland Road and includes an 850 foot bridge that spans Mill Creek, the BNSF Railroad and Gary Holler Trail. Uh, it will reconfigure the Nelson and Northgate intersection and turn it into a roundabout. And it will also modify and improve the 119th and Woodland, 119th and Iowa and 119th Lone intersections among others. Uh, estimated construction value is $30 million with an anticipated letting in the fall of 2023. I think your book might say May, but we're just a little bit behind schedule on that. So I'd be looking for it uh, fall of 2023. Next project I wanna talk about is Clare Road from 106 Terrace to College Boulevard. Uh, so this is actually located west of College and K7. Um, it will construct Clare Road. There is no existing Clare Road right now. There's uh, existing development, uh, single family homes uh, on the east side and the west side is a development that is um, fastly filling up. So uh, we're looking at a 36 foot back to back roadway with turn lanes at intersecting roads. Uh, it'll include grading, curb and gutter, pavement, sidewalk, side path, storm sewer street lights. It'll also include traffic signal at College and Clare and 12 inch water line along the west side of the new Clare Road. Uh, estimated construction value is 6.5 million and we anticipate letting this in January of 2023. Next project I'd like to touch on is a stormwater project, a neighborhood flood control project uh, in the uh, Stagecoach and Sleepy Hollow area. This is just 
uh, southeast of I-35 in Sheridan, or for those outside of Olathe, 143rd Street. Um, so this will replace undersized corrugated metal pipe with larger concrete and HDPE uh, pipe, plus it will add additional stormwater inlets and upsizing of existing inlets uh, in the project area. It will also include new storm sewers and inlets and cured in place pipeline of some difficult replaced segments. Uh, those are a little too close to the home foundations um, for our comfort. Uh, estimated construction value is 3.1 million. Uh, we did anticipate late in this of June of 2020, but we have some utility conflicts right now we're working through. So I would be looking for this fall of this year. Next project is the sanitary sewer improvement project we have. It's the 103rd Street lift station and force main project. Um, this is located near that Claire Road project I was talking to you about. It's west of K7 between K10 and College Boulevard. Uh, so we have an existing lift station and force main. Uh, force main and lift station are both undersized. Uh, the location of the existing lift um, uh, force main actually is in a lot of the backyards of folks. Uh, not a good idea. So this project will rehabilitate, rehabilitate, excuse me, the existing lift station and install a new 16-inch sanitary sewer force main, approximately 6,400 feet long. Uh, lift station improvements will include electrical upgrades, new pumps, and new building. Uh, we anticipated letting this September with a construction value of about $4 million. Last project I'm gonna highlight for you is a uh, combined improvement project at our water treatment plant. Uh, water treatment plant is actually located in Latham, believe it or not, but it is in the middle of Lenexa. So it's on 87th Street, west of K7. Uh, project includes both on-site electrical upgrades uh, at the water plant and our well fields, which are just a little bit north and west of there. Uh, project includes installation of two new generators within the well field and the relocation of the existing generator at our water treatment plant. There will be a new duct bank installed that will include both chemical feed lines and a medium voltage electric loop around the plant site. The project will also construct a new electrical switchgear building and chemical improvements included um, the installation of a new fluoride feed equipment and various chemical storage improvements. Uh, estimated construction value of this is 12.5 million at, with an anticipated letting of February of 2023. Um, that concludes my presentation. I will be around later if anyone has any questions for me. Thank you. Please welcome Ryan Isel, Project Manager, HDR. All right. Well, thank you all for coming today. Uh, Tammy Lorenzen, JCW's program manager, was planning to attend, but she was unable to make it, so I'm pinch hitting at the last minute. Um, I'm HDR's program manager for Johnson County's 25-year integrated plan. So today, I'll just give you a quick overview of the plan, and then we'll talk about some upcoming project opportunities. So JCW, all the projects we're gonna talk today are part of JCW's integrated plan, as are all the capital projects they execute. And like most utilities, JCW is facing a lot of drivers, a lot of needs from regulatory improvements and water quality uh, to system renewal, system expansion, wet weather program needs. So uh, about 2018, JCW recognized the need to develop you know, a long-term plan, and they utilized EPA's integrated planning framework to develop that plan so we could schedule these improvements over a long period of time. So about half of the 25-year plan are major facilities projects. We've also got a lot of collection system renewal, treatment facility renewal and expansion, miscellaneous projects. Um, as you can see, that total dollar value, 2.1 billion is in 2018 dollars. Obviously, a lot's happened since 2018 that affects the cost of construction. And that's one of the great things about having a flexible plan like this is they can plan around that and make adjustments if needed. And this is just a view of the five-year action plan. We keep tracking this every year with a lot of the major projects on here. Um, we don't have time here today to go through all of them, but we're gonna hit just a handful of these key ones coming up that you might be interested in. Uh, first one, the Dykes Branch Pump Station. This is an older pump station facility. The dry side is uh, was built in the 50s with the wet side built in the 70s. If you've driven down Mission Road in the last couple of years, you may have seen a lot of construction going that was replacing one of the old force mains associated with this. Um, 
this uh, pump station is actually getting converted into a wet weather only station. So this is about an $8 million project that should come out for bid next year. Uh, renovation of the station, turning it from a uh, uh, centripetal, or I'm sorry, uh, vertical turbine pumps into uh, submersible pumps, doing a lot of work with the station structure, electrical work, screening work, all of that. This facility is actually located behind the Prairie Works public uh, public works facility, if you know where that's located at. So there'll be a lot of good pump station rehab job here. Another job involving pump stations coming up here, um, state line road pump stations and force mains. Right now flow from JCW travels east by gravity there and as part of the Tomahawk project, they're gonna pump a lot of this flow back to be treated at the Tomahawk treatment plant. So this project involves uh, three individual pump stations at different locations and a common force main. Uh, down State Line Road. Um, we're about ready to go, we're in the engineering selection process now, about ready to go into final design here. Um, it's about a $30 million project total. I think we're showing a bidding in spring of 2023. That might be a little optimistic. Probably summer of 23, this will come out for bid. Uh, another good size project. This is to address uh, wet weather drivers. The Mill Creek Basin is kind of in the northwest part of JCW service area and the basin is growing. Um, a lot of the infrastructure was developed for about 50 to 60% build out, and we're getting to that point now. In the long term, they've got a major plant upgrade that's needed there, but in the near term, we're gonna build a wet weather storage facility to hold back some of these peak flows during uh, big storm events. So this is about a 30 to $35 million job. It's gonna involve a big peak flow pump station and an underground concrete storage facility also a lot of site work and roads to access the facility. And this should bid um, probably fall of 2023, most likely it's in design now as well. A uh, smaller project that should come out in 23, uh, the Middle Basin Treatment Facility, one of the six treatment facilities that JCW operates. The UV system's getting to be obsolete as far as what the manufacturers can cover for spare parts. So this is replacing the UV system, tackling some other electrical upgrades and other upgrades in the building. I think that's about a $4 million project. So the Nelson Treatment Facility is a project that a lot of you've heard about. I think probably many of you are familiar with the Tomahawk Facility, which was JCW's first really mega project. That's that new treatment facility that just, uh, just uh, got commissions fully in operation now. Um, just south of I-435 and Mission Road there in Leewood. The Nelson project is the next mega project. It's a pretty close to a full replacement of a 15 million gallon per day wastewater treatment facility. Uh, JCW's oldest facility built originally in the 1940s, old trickling filter plant, so a lot of improvements to make to bring this up to new technology. This is actually gonna get constructed by a CMAR. There's a CMAR on board already. However, there's gonna be a lot of um, opportunities for subcontractors that are interested in this work. Um, the project team, we're in design now. It's gonna get to 30% design summer and fall, and then JCW is gonna hold some outreach meetings with the contractor to look work to develop those subcontractors, those people that are interested in the project. You can uh, go to jcwnelson.com for more information, and in the future, they're gonna add a web page to that or subcontractors that are interested. But if you are interested in knowing more about the project now, you can go on there, drop a line and contact the team. There'll be a lot of work there. It's you know, gonna be about a $500 million job that's gonna take you know five to six years to construct. So it'll be another real major project for wastewater. And uh, that concludes uh, my presentation today. You can see uh, Tammy's contact info is up there. So uh, let her know or let myself know if you have any questions. Please welcome Trenton Fogelsong, Senior Engineer, Unified Government of Wyandotte County in Kansas City, Kansas. Good afternoon. It is really nice to be live and in person again after so many years. So uh, much like Ryan, I'm pitch hitting. So I guess we're getting deep on the bench here. Um, so just a real quick overview of our Public Works Department and the Unified Government. And maybe for those of you who don't know, we are the Unified Government of the City of Kansas City, Kansas, and the County of Wyandotte County. So it's been, I guess, 25 years this year since that happened. So the Public Works Department covers several different divisions. 
including our building and logistics, so all of our physical facilities and, and, and planning. They take care of a lot of the events and stuff we do. Our, our fleet maintenance management group, uh, streets and water pollution control, which is the operations group for both stormwater and wastewater. And then we're supported across the whole division by an engineering group and an asset management group. So overall, we're really trying hard in the unified government to advance our asset management program. Work smarter, not harder. We're all facing these budget restraints or, or constraints, right? So we're trying to trying to get to where we're really leveraging all of our data to focus our work in the in the places we can do the most good, minimize costs, maximize value. So real quick, introduce our, our senior leadership team, Jeff Fisher, he's public works director. Uh, Troy Shaw is our county engineer, uh, Brent Thompson, county surveyor, uh, John Kelly does building logistics, and then uh, Kurt Winters is uh, director of water pollution control. So kind of in line with what I was talking about with the asset management, we have a lot of annual programs where we, we kind of hit work in different categories in a prioritized manner as an annual effort. So the first part of the presentation is just kind of go over a lot of those um, annual programs. So that would include our pavement preservation, which is a really big topic in our community. Um, we, we're really trying to improve our streets. You can see there's $7 million allocated. Um, that's going to bid early next year, and we're trying over time to get increased funding and al allocated for that. Um, along with that is concrete repair for the, the concrete facilities adjacent to the roadways, curb gutter, ramps, sidewalks. Um, our collection system r, &R which is... Uh, repair and replacement, so that would include CIPP lining, uh, physical pipe replacements, manhole linings, um, and, and similar activities. Um, we're trying to get caught up on alleyways in our community. Um, we have a million dollars uh, that'll bid uh, third quarter of next year for handicap ramps. Um, of course, emergency street repair, who knows when that'll happen. Uh, that's ongoing all the time, as needed. Um, we have allocation for bridge repairs and tra traffic safety concerns, um, filling in sidewalk gaps and neighborhood streets. Um, then some of the bigger projects we'll talk about here, but these aren't all of our big projects, um, but just a few that were selected to highlight here. Um, we have a biosolids project um, ongoing at the Call Point Wastewater Treatment Plant, which is our biggest uh, plant. We talked about it last year. Um, you've probably heard about it. Um, we, we've got a, a kind of a, a retool, some new team members, and kind of taking a fresh look at things and confirming what we what we want to do, but also what we can afford to do in light of the uh, cost concern you've heard about a few times here. But um, it's a progressive design build project um, led with a design build team of Burns and McDonald and CIS Construction. So they'll be leading the bidding exercise and activities on this. It will be jointly advertised on the UG's website as well. Oh, I should say. So we're mostly working on design activities in 22. Maybe maybe there might be some early packages late this year and, and then going on into 23 and 24. Um, our AID pump station project, which is the main pump station that pumps flow, combined flow to the call point uh, treatment plant, roughly 50 million gallons per day. Um, that's a CMAR project. Um, Garney is in the lead on that as a, the uh, construction manager at risk. They'll be leading the bid activities on that. Again, it will be jointly advertised on the UG's website. Um, I know they've, they've done a great job on a past CMAR project doing outreach to all the contractors in the area. So you, you all may have, may have already made contact with them on, on uh, the Wolcott plant. Um, we have a $6 million project out at uh, Treatment Plant 20, which is basically uh, the Kansas River and 435 out west. It says structural improvements on here, which is true, um, but there's the, the bigger part of the project is doing sludge thickening. Um, so we can, we can up, update that and do uh, get caught up on our structural needs out there too, which is a lot of uh, masonry and, and uh, other concrete work there. I guess I didn't hit the schedule. So that, that actually will be hitting the street in a matter of weeks. Um, and then we have a pump station 15 elimination, which is north of Legends area. Um, we got uh, $3 million plugged in for that. 
Um, on the slide, it says uh, late next year. It should be late this year. Um, and that's just a continued investment out west to help shift flows off of our plant 20 to our new Wolcott plant, offload the Kansas River, which has TMDLs. Um, pump station 18 upgrades is a whole slew of things. Um, but a pump station down uh, near Inland Drive and 55th Street, um, it's, a, it's, it's, it's kind of a, uh, just, just you name it, it's going to be included in there. Electrical upgrades, structural upgrades, pumping, uh, screening. And that's all I have. Thank you. Please welcome Jeffrey Hangler, Interim Chief of Civil Works Branch, and Dane Morris, Navigation Restoration Program Manager, U.S. Army Corps of Engineers. Hi, good evening. I am the Program Manager for Navigation Repairs for the Missouri River for the Kansas City District. Thanks to NUCA for inviting the Army Corps here to present on the upcoming projects we have. Very exciting. We received significant amount of funding in the infrastructure bill. And I'm gonna talk about a little bit about the Missouri River portion um, of that. The Kansas City District uh, maintains the Missouri River from Rulo, Nebraska to St. Louis, Missouri, so about 500 miles. And we will be soliciting four very large contracts for repairs of the navigation structures that maintain the na navigation channel on the Missouri River here in the, in the uh, upcoming few months. Um, and you can see those listed there. Uh, we've broken them up into four major reaches within the Missouri River. This is primarily floating plant-based work, uh, placing rock, quarry run rock onto the navigation structures, both dikes and revetments, um, that we'll be uh, soliciting here in the coming months. Those range from about 35 to about $65 million a piece. And we're looking for the construction, the period of performance for those to be about three years right now. In addition to that, we have some additional repair modification projects at some of our environmental projects, our side channel, constructed side channel shoots. This will be primarily land-based construction work, very similar, a lot of rock placement, excavation, and construction of flow control structures at a variety of sites along the Missouri River. These at this on this slide are just a few that are listed. We do have uh, one at Cora Island near St. Louis coming up for solicitation here in a few months. It's actually closer to 10 million that says three to five, but it's uh, a little bit of scope creep has happened on that project. And then we have uh, at least three others that's going to be solicited um, here within the next with the next six months with with potentially two to four others um, coming online uh, next spring. And so I'll have Jeff Hinger come up to talk about some of our other civil works projects we have ongoing. Thanks, Dane. Yeah, so um, so my name is Jeff Hengler. I'm the acting chief of our civil works branch. I get the opportunity, and I'm, I'm pleased to be here to tell you about some of the work we have coming up. Um, so we, we kind of broke this out in program areas. So levy improvements, that's the ones that we we partner with actually several several of the organizations, the governments that have presented here today. So um, and probably is not anybody from St. Joe, but the first two projects are up at St. Joseph, Missouri. So we have a levy raise contract. It's the north half of uh, the levy around the St. Joseph Airport. Um, we should be advertising that sometime in June. In fact, we're supposed to get the we just sent the sponsor the bill for their last uh, cost share on that, but that'll probably be a 15, 20, 25, 30 million dollar contract. And we, we certainly hope to have that awarded by September. So look for that this summer. I, I, I neglected to mention at the beginning, you know, we know that our acquisition systems are not the easiest to navigate through our, our solicitation systems. So on the side, we've got a, a web link to that. I think you can take off the beta. I think it's now just sam.gov. But if you're ever looking for work in the Kansas City District area, search for those those five or six letters there, W912DQ. That'll open up all of our contracts from work that Dane's got, Civil Works, even our military construction. Look for those, look for those words. Um, back to uh, St. Joseph, we've got another follow-on contract, kind of depending on the funding level of the first one. If we have funding remaining, we'll advertise a railroad closure structure on the Missouri side in, in uh, St. Joseph. Another one we have here closer to the metro area is Turkey Creek. Now we say uh, March of 23, that's probably pretty optimistic. It's probably 24 sometime 
um, before we advertise that. But that's a bank stabilization project um, in Turkey Creek. And then finally, any day now, um, actually maybe maybe May at this point, we'll be advertising our phase six construction contract on Dotson. Um, it, it should be the last one. I started my career, Dotson was in like phase three and we're at phase six now, but uh, that's a smaller contract. It's some miscellaneous repairs. So it's right sized for a lot of the smaller firms that might be here today. Um, next slide. So we are still working on some levy rehab projects, some of them from 2019 still, um, but most of these are from last year. So we've got five, six, seven of these that should be coming out anytime in the next couple of months. I think the soonest might even be in the next few weeks. They're smaller contracts. Most of them are going to be less than half a million dollars, um, but and they're scattered up and down the Missouri River. Uh, so this is mainly earthwork only, but it's good work for uh, folks that maybe are as small as just a, a backhoe or a bulldozer. Um, so those look for those coming out soon. And then finally, we have a lot of uh, project work going on at our 18 lakes and reservoirs across the Missouri, Kansas, Iowa, Nebraska area within our area. So we've got several riprap overlays on our dams, Canopolis in western Kansas, Harlan County in southwestern Nebraska, Tuttle Creek Dam, central Kansas. Um, so that's all that work will get advertised uh, over the next several months. I think Tuttle Creek Dam will come out first and that could, could be advertised next week, we're hoping. Um, also up at Harlan County, we've got a project to repair, repay some of the sluice gates. There's an irrigation system up there. So gating, um, valve replacement, pipe replacement. That one should advertise later this fiscal year, late summer. Harry Truman Dam, we've got a project. It's a zebra mussel mitigation project. That, that one's got some, um, some challenges with it's one of the funding entities. So there's a potential that that might get pushed a little bit. But right now it's a copper ion generator to introduce uh, copper ions that'll hopefully repel the zebra mussels and prevent them from clogging up the water intake gates down at Truman. Back up at Harlan County Dam, we have a lot of work in our western lake projects this year. We have a sewer lagoon replacement project that was funded by the infrastructure bill and we, we should be advertising that late this summer. That one was designed actually by one of our um, AE partners, so we're excited to see that one get let. Tuttle Creek Dam, we've got a conduit liner repair, so um, some stain stainless steel plates that go around the gates at the outlet works. We're replacing those. That'll be pretty challenging, confined space, complicated work, um, at least the, compared to the typical work that we usually do. So that one should get advertised. We're thinking that that's probably going to be later in calendar year 2022. So that one probably gets advertised November, December at this point. Harry Truman Dam, we've got a project to replace some of the sump pumps. This is actually, if there's any of you out there that are interested in this work, please bid. We've had, uh, this is going to be our third go around. We've had difficulty getting contractors to bid, give us awardable bids that, um, that, are, that they'll stand behind. So um, that one should be advertised later this summer. We're revamping the design package a little bit. So hopefully there's a little less risk on performance risk on the contractors. And then finally, also back up at Harlan County Dam, we've got a project to replace some of the spillway, to repair uh, some of the spillway monoliths. And there's a very little bit of work, probably less than 100,000 of some um, overpass repairs. It's concrete patching and some non-destructive testing that'll be, get bid as well later this year. And then finally, um, I've got a whole assortment here. These are small business. I should have mentioned almost all of the projects I've talked about today will likely be small business set aside. These are the, the micro small businesses. So, you know, out at Truman, Missouri, that's our biggest O&M project in terms of the, the amount of work that goes on from year to year. So they're putting in place a general maintenance IDIQ to help them get some of that general maintenance work done. Um, we've got land management, BPAs to help with some of the, the land management work, those are work, site clearing, that sort of stuff that we have to do up at Rathbun. Milford's got, um, um, I think this is their maintenance building, replacing or repairing that. We've got a couple of roof replacements, some campground upgrades, replacing utilities that have been damaged over the years, um, some specialty contracts for herbicide application, mowing, vegetation management contracts at a lot of our projects, custodial services. You know anybody that's got uh, 
got an interest in keeping some of our campgrounds and public offices clean. We'd uh, appreciate bids on that. And then all of our lake projects have a variety of projects that come up. Some of them they plan to do in-house and then they just realize they don't have the workload or, or the workforce that can do it. Others, they just realize they're not, they're probably not best suited to do that. And so I think my last slide here, well, I've got contact information for Dane and myself, as well as Scott Mensing, who's our Kansas City Levies program manager. But I also have contact information for all of our lake project offices. So if you ha are interested in any of the work that I talked about or any other opportunities that might come up with, maybe your best bet is to reach out to the lake offices. They know what's going on, uh, when contracts are going to be let, the big ones, the small ones, the ones in between. And they're always more than willing to, to take time out to talk to anybody that might be interested in that. I'll, I'll say especially that we have a hard time getting interested bidders in some of our project offices that are in western Kansas, southwestern Nebraska. They're pretty far, pretty remote. Um, so we always, we open bids on bid opening day. It's always interesting to see who might have bid on those. So um, I'll put a plug in for them. They really appreciate the work. They like it when people come out and see their great sites. And so um, anything that you could do to help us support executing our mission, we appreciate. That's it. Thanks. So on behalf of NUCA, I would just like to say thank you to all of our presenters here today, uh, not only for the time it took for you to put your presentations together, but for also being here to, to give those presentations. So thank you very much. I'd also just like to thank you all for being here, both in person and virtually. And with that, that concludes our program. We've got a lot of food and beverage here in the back, so feel free to stick around a little while and partake of that. Thank you very much for coming out.